she uh, becomes a lifetime supporter of Liverpool. In turn, she insisted that he loves Hoover's and obeys. <laughs> she is practice development manager for NI, employed by Sky, uh, and before this, in a previous life as a lecturer and social worker, a social worker at the University of Ulster. Her one wish, uh, Sherry's one wish, is that we have a very clear understanding of the relationship between social inequality and health and social care marketing. And a yet another excellent wish. So all the six wishes this morning have been, have been very, uh, very good. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Rob. Can I just check out all I have? Because I know that I'm the speaker before lunch. Uh, ten past one. I try and be as quick as I can. Okay, um, I would just like to say thank you very much for the kind invitation to speak at today's conference. Uh, it's been made, which saves me from having to say, say them. I think just, just to add to um, some, some of the points raised, is that coming from a social work background, I would use the example of working with families um, and looking at issues of social deprivation, disadvantage and so forth. And we are in a climate of, of a, a tough time in terms of financing of health and social care. But I've worked with families where that has been the norm, that's day and daily business, that they don't have money, they don't have money for things and they can't afford this and they can't afford that. And I think that given the difficult times and the challenges that are ahead of us, that one thing that we can't say is that we can't afford not to think about quality, that we can't afford not to look at improving services and outcomes for service users and patients. I think what we need to do is we need to look at how we communicate that to frontline staff. Uh, we, we are in an era where, where things are getting tight. We're looking at efficiency savings, we're looking at um, cutbacks. And I think we have an opportunity to really to reevaluate and take stock of where we're at and to look at how we support staff in their work. And I work for the Social Care Institute for Excellence. I'm very quickly going to run through a sort of backdrop to who we are. Um, I'm conscious that not everybody is familiar with what we are and what we do. Um, you will hear me at times calling ourselves Sky, which is S C I the acronym. I have been called the Sky Woman, which I'm not very impressed by. Um, because I have visions of satellite dishes and receiver boxes. Um, anyway, Sky was established in 2001. And we are an independent charity. Um, some of my colleagues and, and people I've met in social care sometimes think we're a quango, but we're not. Primarily our funding does come from the Department of Health in England um, and the Devolved Administration here with the Department uh, and the Welsh Assembly. Basically what we do is we identify and we disseminate, we share information, we share the knowledge base of what is good practice. We cover adults, we cover children's services and we cover workforce development. It's important that I do acknowledge that a lot of what we do depends on working with other organisations and partnership um, with a range of local and national organisations is a crucial part of what we do and, and, and impacts on our success. And I suppose what's very attractive about what we provide is that our resources are free. They don't cost anything. So in the social care arena in particular, that is particularly attractive. Our mantra is to capture, communicate and catalyse. And what we mean by that is we want to capture the information, we want to co-produce knowledge about what is good practice in social care. So in doing so, we undertake and we also commission research. We co-produce information and practical guidance about what works. We communicate that knowledge, that evidence and, and any examples of innovation. And we share our knowledge about what works uh, in partnership with sector partners. And we hope that we will be a catalyst for the transformation of social care services. Um, Sky has been in Northern Ireland since about 2005. Um, we have contributed to some initiatives here, such as um, the Social Services Working Group on the Review of Public Administration, um, NISC, the Northern Ireland Social Care Council's Review of Social Work Tasks and Roles. 
We do have a number of publications that are Northern Ireland based. An example of one is our social care workbook, our social care governance practice workbook, um, which has been used by the Trust to look at issues of governance and to evidence how those governance uh, arrangements are managed. We do have a Partners Council at Sky, and on the Partners Council we do have people from Northern Ireland who go to London three to four times a year to sit on the Council. We have a Northern Ireland trustee for Sky, um, Ian Sutherland, um, Ian who is now taking up the post as Director of Children's Services and Executive Director of Social Work at the South Eastern Health and Social Care Trust. We have myself as Practice Development Manager. I came into post last February. And my role in Northern Ireland is supported by um, a Northern Ireland steering group. And we have representation from the department, from RQIA, from the board, from the Northern Ireland Social Care Council, uh, and, and a range of affiliate organisations. And the work that we do here is informed um, by a service level agreement and funding provided by the department. I was once described as a little mini sky all on my own, and, um, but I also acknowledge the support of my colleagues on the mainland who also come back and forth and undertake some work here. I, I didn't start the introduction by referring to the fact that we need to be better at supporting frontline staff. We need to, I mean, there has been references this morning about incentives to take part in audits about um, you know, what's in it for frontline staff. We also have to, um, across the sector, think about how we use knowledge to inform service development. There has been references made to data being collected, being provided. Does it sit on the shelf and gather dust? Um, so what we do at Sky is we provide guidance on research and knowledge management. And I'm not going to go through these individually, it's just as a reference point that we have provided briefings and, and um, reports on how to do systematic reviews and to support um, people in the field of social care in the way that we do research. The knowledge base of social care has very unique um, factors which are, you know, you know, a plethora of factors that are interrelated. I mean, if you look at social work as a, as a topic and the people that we work with, um, take one family or one individual within a family, um, we, we do work with a very complex set of situational factors which do impact that on that individual and certainly the development of our knowledge base is no different. We, have, we work with people who are active agents and, and outcomes, we work with people who don't want to work with us, we have a statutory mandate and particularly with reference to child protection uh, and, and psychiatric admissions. We, uh, social work as a profession does not, uh, on, on the face of it, and I know there was reference earlier to Jim's point about better representation in the media. Social workers are, as you know, um, when we do reach the media, it's not for the success stories. It's for the feelings, it's for the people who fall through the loop and so forth. So um, we have a long way to go in terms of, of developing that. So we have a range of guidance around developing knowledge and we have guide 34 and our e-learning resource is around the implementation of knowledge to develop better services. We have a rigorous methodology of how we pr produce our resources and we insist that our knowledge base is informed by, um, in addition to the obvious policy and research context that we include, include service user knowledge, practitioner knowledge and organisational knowledge. So how can our resources be used? Again earlier a point was made about training budgets being hit. Um, so our resources can be used formally or informally in a, in a vast array of settings across social care. For example, they can be used for discussions at staff meetings. They can be used for, for CPD purposes, for continuous professional development, um, such as the, the PRTL, which is the professional record of training and learning, um, and that's a, a requirement for, for NISC registration. In Northern Ireland, we have a workforce of about 35,000, 30 to 35,000, uh, and when I say social care employees, that includes 5,000 of whom are social workers. Um, and I think there's an increasing recognition of the diverse array of training needs and provisions, and how that is not just about the conference or, or the day course. And we aim to support registrants or practitioners to be more accountable and be more responsible for their own learning needs, to identify those 
and to look at ways in which learning can be achieved, whether that's reading a document and reflecting on how that impacts and can change practice. So we have tools that can be used for audits of practice and for identification of, of the same of good practice. And we hope that these tools can be used to promote service development and innovation. So the, the four main types of resources that we have are publications, practice and audit tools, our e-learning suite and social care TV. At Sky we recognise that people learn in different ways. Not everybody wants to watch a PowerPoint presentation, not everybody wants to read a document. And we have visual learners, we have reflective learners, we have all different learning styles. When you also bear in mind that the social care workforce is, has historically been predominated as a, a workforce of women. Um, and in many occupations we have, we have low paid uh, and at times devalued <coughs> workforce. And I think it's important that we recognise from the point of view of a service user the important work that they do. But nonetheless, we, we, do, have, um, we do have a need to support um, social care workers in developing their skills and knowledge base. Our publications include, we've, we've practiced guides, these are substantial documents which give a range of recommendations about what a good service would look like. We have research briefings, we have extensive knowledge reviews, and we have at a glance documents. Um, sometimes people say to me, and you do in any, I think any spectrum of work, you meet people who are resistant to change, people who will be quite pessimistic about certain things, and people say, I don't have time to read, I'm so busy working. Well, we've had a glance documents, they're four pages, and I would challenge anybody in a working week not to find time maybe to read an at a glance document. Again, the at a glances are, are summary documents, and it can give somebody a flavour of what's contained in a larger document. And we do provide discussion papers and other position papers. In addition to your own in house um, publications, we do have Social Care Online, which we consider to be the UK's most extensive free database of social care information, and that is updated daily. It includes research reviews, government documents, guidance, inspection reports, journal articles, websites, and so forth. And just to give an example of one of our publications, this is the Lantern page with the, the different um, areas of a, a practice guide called Dignity and Care. And, and, and again, it's an example of a publication that can transcend across a, a wide um, range of social care employees and particularly in adult services. And the next three slides is just going to show you as if I was scrolling down the page. So we have choice and control. And when you click on that, it'll take you into an expanding menu of, of information, links to other sources and so forth. Um, eating and nutritional care, pain management, personal hygiene, practical assistance, privacy and social inclusion. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's a good document that can be used around induction right through um, in terms of helping uh, people to think about the value base of what we do. Our practice tools, they support organisations to improve the way that they manage and support staff working in social care. We have the Good Practice Framework, which is um, I'll, I'll talk very briefly about. Guide 27, which is a leading practice development programme for first line managers, care skills base, people management and the Dementia Gateway. 